Scientists have been studying the impact of wind turbines, and turns out there is a real and measurable impact on the area surrounding them when it comes to the weather. And now is a great time to understand how, because BC is about to get a whole lot more of them. Nine new projects have been announced, and they're even getting a pass on environmental assessments to speed up construction. And with wind power continuing to explode in growth globally, what will more turbines mean for the people who live closest to them? Here's what the science says. Some wind turbines have been in operation for decades, so scientists have been able to study the local meteorology and figure out what's going on and make any changes to newer generation turbines. Because these are massive. They're taller than the Statue of Liberty. The blades themselves are about the same size as a commercial jet wingspan. And as the incoming wind gets chopped up by these mega blades, it seems likely that on some scale weather is going to be impacted. And it is. First of all, that chopping motion means the air gets mixed together. Different layers of the atmosphere, even up to the height of the turbine, have different properties. So the blades are stirring them all together like a blender. Studies have found that in general, turbines make it warmer at night and cooler during the day. NASA satellites have shown in some cases a two to five degrees Celsius surface warming effect, even several kilometers downwind. It's not the turbines are adding heat to the earth though, it's more like a redistribution of heat down to the surface. And for most places, your average temperature won't actually change that much because the warming and cooling effects in a day cancel out. An interesting upside, onshore wind turbines are often built in and around agricultural fields. And that mixing and warming at night has been shown to protect crops from frost. The other thing studies have found is lower humidity and higher evaporation rates downwind from the turbine. Translation, that air can dry out as it moves through the wind farm. Studies have found anywhere from no impact to 4.4% drying of soil moisture content. But this drying significantly differs according to the type of crop and exactly where that wind farm is located. Here's my biggest takeaway. After reading through all these different studies, yes, there are weather impacts, but in most cases, they really are negligible. And what might be observed in one wind farm is not observed in another. And there are ways to minimize any unintended consequences, starting with a full meteorological assessment of an area before the turbines go in, spacing them apart, adding warming blades if needed, putting them in areas where you already get a lot of mixing of the air, like mountains. As far as the impacts to large scale weather patterns, if they are spaced out effectively, studies show that the impact on weather truly is hyper-local at best. In the end, what most research agrees on is despite these micro effects, wind energy is part of the solution to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the primary driver of our warming world and increased extreme weather events. If you want, I've linked all the studies I looked at in the description.